In this video, the Center for E-Learning Didactics and Educational Research at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover will present how to draw blood samples from bearded dragons. Only one of the correct methods to perform this skill is shown here. Needed for this skill lab exercise are a kidney dish, disposal container, the bearded dragon simulator, disposable gloves, gauze swabs, disinfectant, a lithium heparin and sample vial, a 24G cannula with a corresponding 1ml syringe, and a water-resistant marker. Note, a cannula with a large volume should be chosen. With reptile blood, the relatively large, nucleated erythrocytes, often low blood pressure, and quick coagulation can swiftly clog the cannula. Furthermore, blood samples are always taken without congesting the vein, leading to a blind puncture. This makes it possible to aspirate lymph as well as blood. When it comes to bearded dragons, the ventral coccygeal vein, vena coccygealis ventralis, is to be used for extracting a blood sample. The ventral coccygeal vein can be found distal to the cloaca, along the ventral midline of the tail vertebrates. First, all the necessary materials are prepared and placed within reach. The sample vial is labelled and the cannula is set on the syringe. Both are placed in the kidney dish until needed. The bearded dragon is then fixated by an assistant. To achieve this, place one hand behind the patient's head while grasping the pelvic region with the other. This allows a careful fixation of the hind limbs dorsal to the tail. A fixation of the simulator by an assistant is not necessary. The patient's tail can then be held between the thumb and index or middle finger of the non-dominant hand and pulled towards oneself and slightly down. Next, the puncture site is disinfected and dried with gauze swabs. For this, the puncture site is wiped with the swabs in line with the flow of the scales. If necessary, further swabs may be used in the same way. The prepared syringe and cannula can now be taken into the dominant hand and fixated on the hub to puncture the vein at an angle of 45 degrees. The bevel should point away from the patient. If at first no blood can be seen inside the cannula hub, the angle can be slightly altered, without however removing the cannula from the animal entirely. If blood still cannot be seen, both syringe and cannula must be removed from the patient. The used cannula is then properly disposed of and replaced with a new cannula. A new puncture spot should be chosen further proximal. While taking the blood sample, the cannula hub is to be fixated between thumb and index or middle finger of the non-dominant hand. If the vein has been successfully punctured, the desired amount of blood can be taken. Often, no more than 0.5 milliliters are needed, depending on the measured parameters. Lastly, a gauze swab is pressed onto the puncture site, while the syringe and cannula are removed. The cannula is subsequently properly disposed of. To prevent a coagulation of the blood, the sample must swiftly be transferred into the lithium heparin vial. The blood is injected while keeping constant contact with the vial wall. The lid is closed and the vial carefully swayed back and forth. The syringe is then disposed of. On a living animal, the cannula is inserted far enough until the vertebrates provide resistance. The cannula can then be pulled back slightly and into the adjacent vein, allowing an aspiration of blood. This step cannot be done on the simulator.